This question is some more just kind of traditional algebra, and I think most of you are going to approach it right away with that kind of instinct to just solve this equation. I will warn you, right, that they're not asking us for the value of x, they're asking for x plus 4. So my recommendation is to underline, uh, or I guess in the, in the, on the uh, computer you can highlight that, or you can um, write it down on your scrap paper and kind of box it so you know what you're looking for. That is the trap, right, is that we solve for x instead of x plus 4. But for most of us, we are just going to still distribute both of these things and kind of solve it traditionally. So 5x plus 20 is 4x plus 16 plus 29. Start combining like terms. We're going to get 4x plus of 29 plus 1 is 30, 30, 45 there, okay? Then subtract uh, the 4x from both sides and the 20 from both sides, and we get that x is 25, which obviously is an answer, but as I said, that is a trap answer because they don't want the value of x, they want x plus 4, and x plus 4 is 25 plus 4 is 29. So C is the actual answer. Now, if you watched my video for the previous question, number three in the hard section, uh, you would see that I did graph the equation, and you could do the same thing here, and we're going to get a straight vertical line because we are graphing an equation with only one variable, right? There's only x's here. So when I graph it, it's kind of solving that equation for me, and you can see there's the 25, right? And if I go up and down this, this line, is it going to let me do it? Ugh. See this? Oh, there we go. Right, if I go up and down the line, you can see 25 is the x coordinate no matter where I am on this line. So what's happening is it's just solving it for you, but just like with the algebra, the trap exists. 25 is the value of x. They don't want the value of x. They want x plus 4, and so you've got to be able to add the 4 in at the end and not forget that that's what they wanted. Now, some of you are going to do something even kind of weirder, in my opinion is you're going to notice from the start that x plus 4 is what they're after, and it's kind of like in the equation itself as this chunk. So you almost kind of like pretend it's its own variable. Um, I think the way that most of you will kind of think about this, if you're going to do it this way, is you almost pretend like, let's just say for a second, x plus 4 is equal to y. So now my equation isn't this like kind of distribution thing, it's 5y equals 4y plus 29. And when you subtract, we just get that y is 29, which was our answer. Now, obviously that is faster, but I don't think it's worth the risk. I think that when human beings in general think about algebra this way, we are way more prone to mistakes. It's just kind of like our brains aren't super good at it. And even if it just means that the mistake percentage goes from like a 1% chance to a 3% chance, that may seem insignificant, but over the long haul of an SAT, and especially if you're you know, trying to go for one of those top scores, that 3% chance is higher, and it means that, yeah, you could lose points on something that you shouldn't have. So I'm always in favor of strategies that reduce the chance of a careless mistake, and so for me, more traditional algebra, where my brain is kind of just naturally going to go, that's lower mistake chance. And obviously, graphing it and understanding what that graph means, means that I don't do any algebra, right? The, the calculator is doing it for me, so even less of a chance of mistake. In fact, in the calculator method, there's only really two things I could do wrong. Enter the equation incorrectly, or fall for the trap that they don't want x, they want x plus 4. And that trap is going to exist kind of no matter which strategy we choose, so you always need to be thinking of those traps. The SAT is notorious for that, and if you can think about it, you're less likely to fall for them.